PSVR 2 is less than two months away and while there's still some room for surprises, it seems like we are unlikely to see any more big games announced as day one launch titles. So when it comes to big titles launching alongside the PSVR 2, we are left with the following. Horizon Call of the Mountain, Resident Evil Ace, The Dark Pictures Switchback VR and No Man's Sky. Now there are plenty of others coming but those are the heavy hazers, the strongest arguments that Sony has to convincing you to buy a PSVR 2 on day one. However, I believe that out of these four confirmed titles, one stands above the rest in terms of potential and importance. That game is Horizon Call of the Mountain. How's it going lads and ladies, it is Petrifying Pumpkins here and if you like the vid then consider subscribing for future PSVR 2 content, now back to the video. Horizon Call of the Mountain was the first game that Sony themselves officially revealed for the PSVR 2 headset, although its existence had been heavily rumoured for a while previous. It is a first party title being developed by Sony's newly acquired Fire Sprite Studio. Call of the Mountain is a spin-off of Sony's popular Horizon series, which was created originally by Guerrilla Games, who up until that point were best known for the Killzone series. Sony really need to get their full weight behind the PSVR 2 if they expect to succeed, so creating a first party title based on Horizon was a good move by them in my opinion. After all, Horizon's bow combat would be a natural fit for showcasing the abilities of the new Sense controllers of the PSVR 2. When you compare the PSVR your 2 launch lineup with the PSVR 1 launch day titles in 2016, you can see that Sony's big first party output back then was the dead on arrival rigs from the now shuttered Guerrilla Cambridge studio, the demo disc feeling PSVR worlds from Sony London which gave us 6 mini games, and I suppose Until Dawn Rush of Blood seeing as Sony owned that IP although technically it was developed by Supermassive Games. So you might think that the output is considerably less this time from Sony themselves with Horizon being the only first party day one title, however when you consider that Call of the Mountain is, well allegedly, a much more complete game, bigger than all 6 mini games of PS Viewer Worlds added together, and that Sony have the gaps filled with big names like Resident Evil and No Man's Sky and Switchback to replace Rush of Blood, you can begin to feel a bit more confident about the PS Viewer 2's launch lineup. But that all hinges on Call of the Mountain. Let's talk a bit about what we know about Call of the Mountain. Now as I already mentioned it's a spin-off from the Horizon franchise where players will be controlling a brand new character although Aloy herself will appear as an NPC that you can presumably interact with and I bet you will interact with her you dirty little. Anyway the game is first person so that's already a big change from traditional Horizon third person action. Gameplay will be a mix of bow combat and climbing and exploration. It's not open world, however there are supposedly branching paths that will add to the replayability of the game. The game is set to be around 7 hours in length which is comparable to something along the lines of Uncharted 1, but it's also a full price game so you'd want that as a minimum. Now one point of concern I have with Horizon is that the combat is said to have an on rails feeling with players only able to strafe around an enemy instead of moving freely like they would be able to otherwise. Now this could be something that proves to work well, after all on rails combat can be fun, but it's also possible it'll end up making the player feel more limited. Interestingly, Call of the Mountain has a separate boat ride mode where you can just sit in a canoe going down a river, taking in the sights and machines of Horizon. Presumably this is the mode you want to be showing off to your friends and your family to give them an idea of what virtual reality is like. A next generation shark encounter experience if you will, that PS Viewer Worlds originally provided. Now that boat ride sounds great for beginners but what about those wanting more? Is the meat and potatoes of Call of the Mountain going to be able to go toe to toe with something like Half-Life Alex? Alex is considered the gold standard for AAA VR games since it released, a polished full length campaign that was built from the ground up with virtual reality in mind. I might personally be looking forward to Resident Evil Ace more than Horizon right now, but Resident Evil Ace is going to be ported to VR. I'll get to see Lady D in all her glory, but it will essentially be the same Resident Evil Ace I already played, but with motion controllers. A game designed with traditional displays in mind and not virtual reality. Call of the Mountain however is being developed specifically for VR, and Fire Sprite really have the potential to wow us here to make full use of the medium of virtual reality and have it be woven into the DNA of the game, just like Half-Life Alex. 
Right now, little fuss is being made about Call of the Mountain by traditional gaming media, largely in part to that industry ignoring virtual reality in general. However, Sony have all the ingredients to make their own Alex. They have a popular IP to build off. Horizon Zero Dawn alone sold over 20 million units. They have improved hardware with some cutting edge technology like eye tracking to take advantage of. They have talented developers in Fire Sprite who before now were best known for the persistence. The possibility for greatness is there if Fire Sprite don't fumble the ball. And seeing as Horizon Call of the Mountain is the big first party exclusive, this is going to be the game that every reviewer will be prioritizing when the PSVR 2 launches. Even the traditional media that likes to ignore VR will be forced to cover this one. And that is why Horizon is the most important game of the day one lineup. If they can blow those reviewers away with a triple A VR experience, they could be calling it Sony's Half-Life Alex and drum up some considerable interest in the headset. Not to mention encourage Sony to go all in with bringing their biggest IPs to PSVR 2, although they should be doing that regardless. However, should Call of the Mountain fall short, or even worse, be a bad game? Well, that is not going to be a good look for PSVR 2. Journalists who are already talking about VR being on its deathbed will pounce on the opportunity to say that this is another nail in the coffin of VR. And the PSVR 2's launch will be tainted. Unless Firewall Ultra comes out day one to save us all. That's it for this video, lads and ladies. If you enjoyed us, then consider liking, and subscribing, all that usual YouTube and shice. Thank you to Decepticon for letting me use his music in all of my videos. You can check him out, Decepticon.com. Link to him will be in the description below. I'll see you in the next one. Until then, please stay nice and moist.